Hey, good afternoon, and welcome to this episode of Business Basics. My name is Lee Iben. I am the head action coach with Action Coach Campus. We're a business coaching firm. And every day, I like to visit with business owners and CFOs and COOs about their business. And today, joining me all the way from Texas is Jessica, Jessica Westcott with Fuzzy's Tacos. Jessica, thank you for being here today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So Jessica, tell us the fuzzy taco story, if you would, please. Yeah, Fuzzy's has a really fun history. We opened our first unit in 2003 across from the Texas Christian University campus in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, Grew to a couple, three, four units through 2007, 2009, we opened our first franchise unit. In 2016, we had 80 units and were purchased by NRD Capital which is a private equity firm based out of Atlanta. And today we're sitting at 141 units across 18 states with around 50 franchise partners. Wow, that's fantastic. That's that's some phenomenal growth, really. Um, Tell me, how how does an interested person find out about the Fuzzy Taco opportunity? Yeah, we we have a a website that walks you through our franchise um, development opportunity. And then most people come to us through word of mouth. They come into our restaurants. They love the food, they love the vibe, they love the people, and they want to be part of it. Um, and we've been pretty blessed over the years that we've grown. Um, 97% of our growth has been organic. That's fantastic. You know, when, when I speak with, with my clients about, you know, a lot of them are, are small business owners, and we talk about putting systems in place. Because when you get to that point where everything is working like a well-oiled machine, seriously, you can, you can sell your business or you can franchise it. Uh, because now your system's in place. So a new franchise partner with Fuzzy's Taco, they're going to they're gonna come in and they're actually buying your system. Is that correct? That's exactly right. And that's really the benefit of the franchise model is you've got someone who's vetted in the restaurant space, particularly, you've got all the recipes, you've got the training, you've got the playbook for what the kitchen needs to look like, how it needs to be built, what equipment you need to buy, what kind of marketing has worked in other places or hasn't how we best train each of the positions, what kind of GM you should be looking for, what kind of real estate works best in our culture. And, you know, it's the benefit of, you know, future franchise partners get the benefit of learning from the mistakes and the successes of the previous franchise owners and everyone who's in the system today. And that puts us in a really good spot that we've got 17 years of history, you know, to learn and grow from and to make us better every day. That's fantastic. And that's, that is so true too. It's that, um, that culture that you've established with other franchise partners. Um, are, are the original founders, are they still in the picture somewhere? Yeah, actually, uh, Mel Knight, our president is one of our original founders. Okay. Um, and is here in our office every day. He meets with every franchise partner before they sign on to become a franchisee and is, I mean, very active in our day-to-day business. And it, you're right. The culture and the trust that he's cultivated over the last 17 years I mean, we wouldn't be where we are today without him, no doubt. Yeah, and and you technically, you you really wouldn't have to be a, a foodie. I mean, if you just follow the system, it works, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, but it's hard not to be a foodie if you love, when you love fuzzies, you know? <laughs> right, um, right. So maybe we do, we have a lot of successful franchisees that um, We've got one that was a veterinarian and decided to do this in quote unquote retirement. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of real estate agents, you know, who hadn't done a lot with food before. And then, you know, it, it's awesome because we can bring to the table with them people who have spent their career in restaurant that now are owners. And it, it brings this really great group of, of thought partners together. And that's one thing, the culture that's been built here at Fuzzies is a very transparent um, amount of a huge amount of trust and communication. So whenever you bring all these different people from different backgrounds, you couple them with the experience of our corporate team and we all work together as one big extension of what Fuzzies is. I think it's one of the reasons we've been successful during the pandemic is, Mm -hmm. you know, we, we all play on the same team and on the same side. And when we're all playing offense together, it's hard to stop us. Right. Well, and you know, when I met the local staff in Coralville, Iowa, uh, during the pandemic, they used that opportunity to remodel the store. And that was like, seize, seize the opportunity, right? Absolutely. I mean, it was a great time to get in. We had so many people who repainted themselves because you had the opportunity to, your dining rooms closed, and it, it puts you in a great position on the other side of this um, for people to want to come and hang out. Coralville's 
I mean, I love the way that turned out. It, it's beautiful. It's, it's a nice, it's really a nice store. You know, when I, when I speak with some folks that they're a little leery, I think of a franchise model um, and mainly because of those monthly franchise fees that, that seem to get assessed. Um, and, and personally, the way I look at that, Jessica, is it's like you have another employee because when you buy that system, you're, you're taking so much of the, the difficult decisions away that it's really worth paying that extra franchise fee for what you're getting in return. Absolutely. And you're getting so much scale with that. You know, like we've already talked about, you're getting um, the benefit of having the success and failures from other, other franchise partners. Mm -hmm. You're getting the benefit of a team of our corporate office today is 35 individuals. You're getting the full weight of those 35 team members in exchange for that. And I think that that's, you know, that's maybe where you could go wrong on our side too. And we're very, very intentional around ensuring that we're always looking at ourselves as an extension of that franchisee's team, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, we're an extension of their team. They're not an extension of ours. Right. And as long as you're approaching it in that light, you really start to put things in a great perspective that, that lends itself to productive teamwork. Sure. And I think when the, when the owners originally decided to franchise, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into that to determine what type of franchise offerings you want to have. There are, there are good franchises out there and there are not so good franchises out there, but, right. but Fuzzy seems to have it figured out. Yeah, we've, I mean, we've got the, the blessings of just building that culture over so much time. You know, when we spread by word of mouth to start, we haven't had franchise development marketing for the first 16 years of the brand. It was all organic growth. And when you've got that, you know, it develops a really strong foundation. Um, and we try to do things right by our partners um, and giving back to them, making sure that, you know, they feel like there's a, a huge amount of value in the fees that they pay us through royalties and on the marketing side. And, you know, there are they're our report card, their satisfaction is, their profitability is, and increasing their sales. That's how we grade ourselves against that fee we collect. And we've got a franchise advisory council that we meet with quarterly and we share everything. We put together every four weeks um, detailed analytics against our annual strategic plan and they get transparency into 100% of that. Good, bad, or indifferent, right. <laughs> you know, we're sharing it. And that's where you start to build that, um, you just build more trust, you facilitate more communication. And then when everybody feels like, you know, we're all um, playing on the same team and running for the same goal. Um, honestly, it, it seems so simple when you say it like that. But <laughs> that's the recipe to, to, to the success of our brand for sure. Yeah. And so, you know, and there's, there's, there's taco shops all over the place. And yet there's, there's the fuzzies, We'll call it USP, unique selling proposition. Tell me how that came about. How did how did Fuzzies define themselves in that marketplace? Yeah, ours is um, based on a couple of things. The first being value driven. Our biggest differentiator in the in the taco space is that you can come, uh, you know, a, a husband, wife, and a couple of kids um, can have margaritas and beers, and you can get out in and out the door by, for about twenty to twenty five bucks. So that that's sense. our huge differentiator between our competitors. We also have a very laid back, chill atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So we try to create that through the aesthetics and then through the way that our team members interact with you. And then the food, I mean, the food's your golden ticket in. Um, right. It's kind of your minimum requirement. If your food isn't good, then nobody's coming back. <laughs> in every day. Um, and so, you know, we try to make our recipes right every day and we really believe and, and coach and teach around, you know, when our recipes are made right, we believe that we stand out among the rest. And when you combine those three things together, you know, it makes a good recipe for, for a, a brand affinity. And that's you how it gets created. It. That's right. And I, I would assume that you're, you're maybe always striving for maybe different menu items or seasonal items to, to pop in there. Is that right? Always. Yeah. We try to plan for about four a year. Um, and right now we've been focused on tacos. So this year we've done a citrus heat mahi which is a little bit of a, a more premium option from our normal style Baja taco. And then we just ended the cluckin' fried chicken, uh, which is a fried <laughs> chicken taco with a spin on the Nashville hot. Love it. 
That's yeah. my mouth watering already. I, I'm, a, I'm a big street <laughs> taco fan, even here in Iowa. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, long story, I used to work in a Mexican restaurant way back when as a table magician. I was a, I would hop from table to table. And as, as guests were waiting for their plates to come out, I would entertain them and their kids, uh, which, was, which was a ball. Oh my goodness, how fun. Oh yeah, it was a lot of fun. In fact, uh, one time this guy came in, he's looking at a college kid, looking really just nervous. I said, hey man, what's up? And he said, I'm gonna propose to my girlfriend tonight. And he said, I want you to make her ring appear by magic. And I'm like, okay. And he pulls out, had to be like, Jessica, had to be a full carat diamond ring. He goes, <laughs> he goes here you go. We'll be back at eight o'clock. So for three hours, I'm carrying this diamond ring with me. It's like, I hope this guy's coming back, right? <laughs> but we did. Like, she said, yes. <laughs> what's that? I said, did you think you were getting pranked? Oh, well, no, I just hope the guy came back because I, I had this diamond ring on me. Uh, but it, it turned out great. She said, yes, it was a good night. But uh, yeah, I, I love Mexican restaurants and I love what you guys are doing at, at Fuzzy's Tacos. Um, it, it's exciting to see that franchise growth across the U.S. Um, are, there, are there markets that you haven't explored yet or other areas? Yeah, right now we're targeting growth um, in North Carolina and in Phoenix, and then um, some tertiary markets in Arkansas and South Carolina. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. That's cool. And do you get your franchise partners together once a year or a couple times a year? Or I mean, besides the pandemic, after that's all done with, but... Right. Yeah, yeah. in a normal year, we see the Franchise Advisory Council um, in person four times. We've got a lot of local partners, and we travel a lot to be one-on-one -on -one with them. And then we get the entire group together once a year, which is always a really fun, oh, yeah. uh, fun weekend that you need to recover from into the next week. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, so Action Coach, we're also a franchise. I own the, I own the firm area here in, uh, in, in my part of Iowa. And we come from a, a mindset of abundance, right? We're all trying to help each other out because there is just so much out there to go around. And we just want everybody to succeed. And I'm sure you have the same culture with Fuzzies. Yep, absolutely. And that's the key to it. You know, whenever you're vested in each other's mutual success, um, it just, it, it sets the route, right foundation for everything else that you build on. I love it. Okay, Jessica, here's the, here's the golden nugget of a question. So you've been with Fuzzies now, you said three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And prior experience before that, tell me in, in your time with Fuzzies, what are, what's a piece of business nugget? I mean, you got to analytical financial background. What's the one thing that you could pass on to other business owners, franchise partners or not? What's the one thing that you could tell them a bit of advice? Um, do your homework. So at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter, depending on how big the initiative is, you know, do your homework around what's important. Um, assess where your business is at that point in time and make a plan against the weaknesses that you have. And then be diligent every four weeks, be diligent and hold yourself to reporting against that because that four week time frame is gonna give you the ability to either recognize what's going wrong so you can fix it or to celebrate faster with your broader team to encourage them to keep pushing on. And that, it, it really changes everything when you start to create that accountability for yourself. Thank you for saying that, that is so true. And Unfortunately, so many small business owners, they don't watch their numbers. They, 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 don't, they don't check in with themselves. They don't have that accountability piece. And, and we talk about that and talk about, but to hear it come from you, it just has so much more impact. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jessica, I'm going to let you go. I don't want to keep you any longer. And I know you're busy. It's Friday afternoon down in, down in Texas, and I'm sure you've got great weekend plans ahead. So I, I won't keep you any longer, but don't go away quite yet. All right. Hey, Sounds um, good. Well, thanks so much for having me. This was really fun. Oh, uh, you are so welcome. So our special guest today was, was Jessica with Fuzzy's Tacos, and they're based out of Texas, but they have a store right here in Coralville, Iowa. If you haven't tried Fuzzy's yet, I would highly encourage you to do that. Jessica, what's what's the big uh, what's what's the big menu item now? What, what's the happening thing at Fuzzy's? Uh, we're doing family meals right now for the holidays, so bringing some Fuzzy's Perfect. home. Um, so yeah, you can get it online or in store or call the, call the restaurant. Perfect. So do that. Take Jessica's advice, get a home <laughs> meal to go home. All right. My name is Lee Ivan. Thank you all for joining us today. I appreciate it.